how was it working? <laughs> Give me some uh, Ronnie Garvin. How was it working with Ronnie Garvin? Was he Ronnie Garvin was uh, probably one of the snuggest, uh, stiffest, <laughs> <laughs> craziest uh, person you'd ever want to work with. And for anybody who, who wants to know, Ronnie Garvin was, you know, originally one man gang, Ronnie <laughs> Garvin. In case nobody, you know, a lot of people did not know that, and but that, that was his name. And people always ask me, man, did you steal his name, or how, you know, how come he? I, I said, well, I didn't steal his name when I got to Mid South. I, I'll give you that explanation when we get there. But no, I didn't steal his name. They could have called me Humpty Dumpty, and I'd been okay, you know. But but anyway, yeah, Ronnie was like, man, he just beat you up, basically. I mean, he, 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 when it's time for him to sell, he'd sell. But, man, him, Ronnie, him garbage shops and things, man, oh, man, he'd light you up like a candle, man. It's crazy. But, I mean, it's, that was his style. He, he liked it super snug. You know, that's just the way he was, uh, I guess, just the way he brought, was brought up. And all through his career, even later when he became the hands of stone, Against Flair, no Flair, you would say that he bust bust his chest open, you know, and start bleeding, he chopping him so hard, you know. So, but that was Ronnie Garvin. How was the um like behind the scenes? I guess was there? Did you guys talk, hang out? Did he no, no, up I and didn't, didn't laugh about it? Or? I didn't hang out with him at all. No, you know, I, honestly, I, only people I kind of we kind of stayed together was me and, and Rick Star. We roomed up and got an apartment. Then later on, Rick Starr, Gary Rawl, Paz Watley, we kind of roomed up and split an apartment, you know. But, you know, and, uh, I rode with Bob Orton a few times, you know, not too many times, but a few times. And But uh, Ronnie Garvin never, never hung out with him at all. Uh, Macho Man, I, I rode, you know, like I said, a few times with him and Mr. Poffo and Randy and Lanny, you know, but it was, you know, kind of, you know, not too many times. Had a lot of matches with Lanny uh, as a heel. That was like a night off, basically. I was, uh, I was like, you know, me I'm not understanding at that time, but years later, you know, I thought about it and said, man, that was so easy with Lanny, you know. And Lanny uh, probably... I mean, you know, I ain't seen all the punches in the world, all the guys throw a punch, but Lanny probably had one of the best punches in, in professional wrestling, you know. The, the best right hand yeah, in, wrestling, exactly. in wrestling. Rick and, said that on just, another interview. And he told you, me he you sold he, it correctly. It looked like a million dollars. Yeah, if you didn't if if you didn't sell it, it looks like shit, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But he, I and mean, then I was the guinea pig. I probably worked with him three hundred <laughs> times, and we. Well, 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 thank you for teaching him how to throw it. By the time I got there, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, so you guys didn't hang out much then. You and you and Crusher, like you didn't. I didn't hang out. It was just me and, me and Randy usually, and we'd wake up, go to the gym, do whatever, make the town. He would be doing booking. Usually, we was driving that little blue uh, car. He he went in the, the big car match in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, and then he'd be smoking dope and, <laughs> and drinking and, and whatever, and, it was, and we did that seven days a week, and we loved every minute of it. And he was the he was the teacher. I was the student. I got his old robes. I got his old trunks. I got his old knee pads, etc. I didn't know anything, and would pro proclaim to knowing nothing. That all I was doing was copying him, but it would come off different because I moved different and I wasn't him. You just uh, when you're a, a mark, a rookie. Uh, what if you're playing with Michael Jordan? You're copying Michael Jordan. If you want to be like, run like Jimmy Brown, I guess I'm dating myself, <laughs> <laughs> but you copy your heroes and then it just comes off a little bit different and your own, and you're your own character. So eventually what happened, they put all these clips together, you know, one after the other, after the other, and they showed him doing the commentating over it. And, uh, they, they said, man, he's like a one man gang. And that's the name they stuck me with, you know. So I didn't steal Ronnie Garvin's name. I would have took, you know, like I said, if they would have called me, hey, he's like a Humpty Dumpty. I would have, I would have been a Humpty Dumpty the rest of my life. But I remember but, asking uh, yeah, they, they stuck me with one man gang, and 
then from then on, the guys, you know, like DiBiase would be doing the interview, you know, Akbar brought this one-man gang in, or Bill Watts would be like, oh, my God, look at one-man gang, and it just kind of snowballed from there, you know. Did Ronnie Garvin ever say anything about it? Yes, he did. He sure did. He got in touch with me and told me, if I ever run into you anywhere, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to beat the crap out of you for, for doing that. And uh, <laughs> he wasn't joking either. He was serious. Oh, shit. Right. I'm sure. I'm sure that you know he would have. He would have done that. I wouldn't have had a chance. He would have killed me probably because I I can't fight for nothing, man. If I was to throw a punch on somebody, it'd be a working punch. I wouldn't know how to throw a real punch for anything. I'm not a tough guy. I just what had to give it as a tough guy. What did you say back to him when he said that? I, I didn't say it. He didn't really give me a chance. Uh, you know, I said I, I tried to explain what happened. He wouldn't listen to it. He just hung up. You know. But years later, he came into WWF, you know, as, uh, you know, Ronnie Garvin, and there was no trouble at all, you know. So, no, uh, because that is after he'd already been the hands of stone and yeah. been the world champion and all that. So, I guess he was maybe about about to by then. But, but no, nah, yeah, he wanted to, he, he said, if I ever bump into you anywhere, you know, you, I'm going to beat the crap out of you. You know, he didn't say crap, but I'm going to beat the crap <laughs> <laughs> out too, you know. I wouldn't have had a chance. So. Oh, God. But so, uh, yeah, that's, that's, how, that's how one man gang came about. And then big gold and a bill fold so swole that I can't get the shit closed. So I money fold and rubber band wrap and when it.